Good afternoon. My name is Connie Leeper. I'm the organizing director for NC Warren. We are a 32-year-old uh, environmental and climate justice nonprofit working really hard for a swift transition to clean, renewable energy. We're here today with our allies to announce a statewide escalation of efforts to block Duke Energy's massive expansion of climate and community wrecking frack gas. To do so, we're calling on Governor Roy Cooper to use his executive authority to formally declare a climate emergency in North Carolina. This will help prevent climate disasters instead of just responding to them. The climate emergency is accelerating. It's time for unprecedented leadership. Some 1,300 local and national governments have declared a climate emergency. We're calling on Governor Cooper to be the first U.S. governor to do so. More than 72 diverse organizations and businesses have signed the letter that we will present to Governor Cooper today. Many of them are youth groups and people already suffering the impacts of climate disasters. Some who live in a nearly constant state of emergency and recovery. To amplify this injustice, many of them are being targeted by Duke Energy for its proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline, a liquid gas storage facility in Robinson County, and dozens of new power plants. By and large, these folks are not responsible for the climate crisis. Several of them are here with us today as speakers. Part of the statewide escalation is a new statewide ad campaign calling for Governor Cooper's leadership at this critical time in history. It will run for at least two months using conventional and digital media. We also have some of those in our press packets. There's also a 15 second video ad that is linked from our press release and at ncwarn.org. Finally, the science is clear that expanding the use of gas is making the climate crisis worse. And leading scientists say Duke's massive gas expansion must be stopped. Extraordinary times require extraordinary leaders. We're calling on Governor Cooper to be a heroic leader. Speaking with us today, we have Donna Chavis, who's co-founder of the Red Tailed Hawk Collective, Madeline Parker, who is the Youth Climate Justice Organizer at NC Warren, Jordan Revels, who is a uh, Friends of the Earth U.S. Grassroots Fellow who lives in, in Pembroke and attends Pembroke University, Elijah King, who's co-founder of the Youth Environmental Justice Initiative of Durham, and Jim Warren, who is the Executive Director of NC Warren. Our first speaker would be Donna Chavis. As I said, she is the co-founder of the Red Tail Park Collective and a longtime leading voice on environmental justice and climate justice issues. Her voice has never been more important than today. Donna. Thank you, Connie, for those very kind words and very important call to Governor Cooper. I'm here today because I love all of creation and I love North Carolina. North Carolina is my current and ancestral home and it is in distress. Pembroke in Robinson County is where I reside and where we are under a constant climate crisis attack. In the past four years, Robinson County has been impacted by three major storms. In 2016, Matthew brought devastating flooding, strong winds and moderate storm surge. Robinson County was the worst hit with that storm. Before we could rebound from Matthew, Hurricane Florence made landfall on the morning of Friday, September 14, 
2018. Again, the damage was devastating. Then in October 2018, we had the remnants of Hurricane Michael. In 2019, came Dorian. All of these storms have left lingering scars and damage that keeps us wondering when the next one will hit. After Florence, the banks of the Lumbee River flooded for months. I got constant daily notices of flood alerts for 10 months. A constant reminder that we are never far from further devastation. A fact that is supported by scientific data. We are told it's not a matter of if, but when the next major storm will hit. This is the case across Eastern North Carolina along what we call Hurricane Alley, and ironically, the proposed route of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. I love my home state and territory. That is why I join with others today in calling for Governor Cooper to declare a climate emergency for North Carolina. North Carolina has a history of being the progressive lead of the Southeast. That reputation is in jeopardy. We do not need further fossil fuel development that adds to the growing climate crisis. We do not need the ACP, the MVP Southgate, or Duke's LNG facility that is planned for the heart of Wakulla, an historic indigenous community in Robinson County. Technology is available now for the just transition to safer renewable energies. Governor Cooper, be a climate leader. Support your North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality in revoking the 401 water certification of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, as lined out in the August 13 administrative legal petition submitted to the DEQ by Friends of the Earth US and the North Carolina Climate Solutions Coalition. Do not wait until all other legal challenges to the Atlantic Coast Pipeline are complete before you act. Set an example for other governors. Be a leader and declare a climate emergency for North Carolina. Be proactive, not reactive. Prevent the climate emergency from worsening. All citizens of North Carolina deserve no less. Thank you, and we'll be waiting. Thank you, Donna. I'm Madeline Parker, the Youth Climate Justice Organizer at NC Warren. I work with young people across the state to provide relevant resources and education to support them in their local climate justice efforts and to lift up their voices. Youth are, in their own sense, a frontline community in the climate crisis and bring a unique perspective to the movement that cannot be replaced by older generations. We will be inheriting this world and deserve to have a say in what happens to it today so that we can look towards a better and safer tomorrow. As you will hear from our next two speakers, this youth contingent is demanding a different path for North Carolina, and one that will prioritize making a swift and yet just transition off of dirty fossil fuels and towards renewable energy. Youth want clean energy jobs, not a world spinning out of control, which is evidenced by the overwhelming youth support of the Green New Deal, which prioritizes making those green jobs happen. Scientists worldwide have been emphatically trying to stress how critical the climate crisis is and how little time we have to deal with it. Just recently here in North Carolina, retired EPA climate official Dale Everts and renowned climate scientist Drew Shindell sounded an alarm about the dangers of methane and our continued use of fracked gas for electricity generation. Alongside 27 other experts, Everts and Shindale called on Governor Cooper to halt the fracked gas expansion here in North Carolina. Scientists have been clear about this. We cannot continue building fossil fuel projects, and yet Duke Energy continues to do so. Renewable energy paired with battery storage is now beating out new gas-fired plants, both in terms of economics and reliability. The infrastructure also creates more jobs than new gas plants while critically avoiding the local health and safety impacts associated with so-called natural gas. 
It is evident how desperately the fossil fuel industry is clinging to its survival right now, as the tides are changing towards greater availability and affordability of renewable energy sources with battery storage. We need to push them to do the right thing for the planet and for our communities. We appreciate that the governor has set out to be a climate leader, but his efforts will be outweighed if Duke Energy keeps expanding the use of fracked gas. The Atlantic Coast Pipeline is facing serious trouble and market forces are strongly shifting away from gas. So this is the time to do what's right here. Governor Cooper needs to do it with or without Duke Energy's cooperation. He ought to use his political position to highlight to the people of North Carolina the disastrous impacts of gas and the magnitude of the climate emergency we're in. We believe that he's a leader who will take this opportunity to rise above harmful business as usual thinking and protocol. We're calling for Governor Cooper's climate leadership. Stop Duke Energy's huge fracked gas expansion. And now I am ple pleased to introduce Georgian Revels, Friends of the Earth US Grassroots Fellow, who will then be followed by Elijah King, co-founder of the local Youth Climate Justice Conversation Series. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction, Madeline. As Native American youth and lifelong resident of Robinson County, I witnessed firsthand the damage that both Hurricane Matthew and Hurricane Florence have had on my community. Displacement, loss of jobs, and a never-ending road to recovery. Just this past week, there was a community disaster response meeting where people were still expressing their grievances of being displaced and out of a home. To this day, from a storm that was nearly four years ago. Could you imagine having to take care of your children, to provide for them, to cook food for them, out of a hotel for months to a years on end? And as much as it pains me to have to accept and admit this, it only gets worse from here. The science overwhelmingly backs and supports the fact of how exacerbated the impact and issue of the climate crisis is on natural disasters. Whether it be from the mass burnings in Australia, the mass floodings of Jakarta, or our own hurricanes and flooding down here in the southeastern North Carolina and the United States at large. This is troubling enough on its own, and it's even more troubling to know that there are unnecessary natural gas projects being pushed by both Dominion Energy and Duke Energy, such as the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and proposed LNG storage facilities that will be worsening the impact and issue of this climate crisis if they were allowed to be built. This is an ongoing issue that I've become very passionate about and involved to due to the amount of threat that this has for my community. I was so moved by the resistance to Standing Rock and their issue with the Dakota Access Pipeline, as were many of my peers and members of my community. So when I learned about something similar going on in my community's backyard, I couldn't just stand idly by and allow my people our environment and our future generations actually be threatened by these projects. It's my job to continue on the work and resistance of my ancestors to protect our waterways, our people, our way of life, and ensure that the next seven generations have a healthy and safe future in store for them. You cannot claim to support and represent the tribes in North Carolina while openly accepting funds from and allowing the construction of these damaging projects that disproportionately impact more than half the tribes in North Carolina. All the leading scientists have called for Governor Cooper to take action and be bold with the most important necessary climate leadership that will put us on a path to mitigating these issues, not making them worse. The young people of my generation are watching, and we are tired of being tired over the fact that our voices are not being considered, that our future is being actively jeopardized by policymakers and legislators who care not for the voice and well-being of their constituency. We understand the science, we believe the science, so why can't we move forward with taking action on these issues before they get worse? We will have our voices heard, and we will take action, especially as the polls open up. We need Governor Cooper to take a stand and put a stop to these projects and lead us to a greener, cleaner energy future for North Carolina. Thank you. Contrary to popular belief, youth are not incapable of learning, caring, or understanding these issues as they relate to environmental justice, 
climate change or anything else relating to the climate in our environment. One of the biggest reasons why I started the Durham Youth Environmental Justice Initiative and the conversations are because hundreds and thousands of youth all over our state and our youth nation care about these issues. And we understand that these issues fall on our backs and our future. And we are watching the governor to see his actions. Being a climate leader has taught me many things, but one thing I want to teach the governor. One, big, one of the biggest qualities about being a leader is protecting and listening to your constituents. Protecting the intent and the interests of all people, and I mean all people, including youth, because of the fact that this is our future. And essentially, we are not only the future of our society, but we are the backbones of our society. And we deserve to be heard. You know, Duke Energy is rapidly expanding and its use of frack gas, regardless of how many climatologists advise the governor against it, to stop fuel projects, at least. And the fact of the matter is Duke Energy doesn't have any intention of stopping anytime soon, unless the governor uses his power to stop them and they, have, they are out of control, they've been out of control, but we have let it go for too long. We have ignored it for too long. And so, Mr. Governor, like I mentioned earlier, are we gonna use your leadership and express those good qualities of leadership? I'm only 18 years old and I know that quality is really important. You know, uh, fun fact, we love to talk, you know, I'm gonna say this before though, we love to talk about these issues as they relate to our environment and climate. But these are really also issues of environmental justice. You know, fun fact, 725,000 people are living in poverty in North Carolina right now. That makes 7% of our state living in poverty, including me and my family. You know, fracking causes poor water quality and air quality, which impacts those poor communities more than ever, more than anyone else. They can't afford this. These people are greatly impacted by the fracking which the governor has excused for far too long. Renewable energy is big and it's the people's choice. Unemployment in North Carolina is 4%, which is higher than the national rate. These jobs in renewable energy are proven, they are proven to create way more jobs and it's a cheaper option, it's a healthier option for all people. So, in closing, Duke Energy is getting out of control, as we know. So the question is, Mr. Governor, and I'm going to look at the cameras. <laughs> the question is, Mr. Governor, are you going to let the Duke Energy conglomerate walk all over you? Or are you going to express the good qualities of a leader and use your power to stop Duke Energy in their tracks and stop their gas expansion? Thank you. Thank you, that was Elijah King. Uh, my name is Jim Warren, I'm director of NC Warren, and to recap what we're hearing today, I mean, people are hurting. Duke Energy's making it worse, and we need the governor to stop it. Governor Cooper's legal authority is stronger than that of many of the 1,400 leaders who have already declared climate emergency. Under the North Carolina Emergency Management Act, the governor has broad authority to declare a state of emergency because we indeed have an ongoing emergency, repeated hurricanes and other catastrophic events. And making that declaration allows him to prohibit construction of natural gas, pipelines, power plants, compressor stations, storage facilities, and all the other noxious facilities uh, involved with Duke Energy and Dominion Energy's plan. The Emergency Management Act has traditionally been used to respond to disasters. It's been used that way many times, but it is not restricted to that use. In fact, just yesterday, the governor asserted his authority to order curtailment of business activities in North Carolina, if needed, regarding the coronavirus, and if needed to prevent the worsening of that emergency. And that is exactly what we are calling on Governor Cooper to do with the climate emergency. The act provides him with the authority, quote, to utilize 
all available state resources as reasonably necessary to cope with an emergency. And end quote. With people devastated by hurricanes, with worse storms ahead, and with the science, science linking such disasters to the use of natural gas, we contend that coping with this ongoing emergency includes the authority to prevent it from growing worse indefinitely. And surely it is reasonably necessary, the words in the act, for the governor to do so. Governor Cooper also has an enormous bully pulpit to help inform the public about the urgency of stopping Duke Energy's massive gas expansion. Meanwhile, Duke Energy leaders act like there's no emergency at all. No wonder they are making it worse. They are a key driver of the climate crisis. And they are, what they're doing is trying to lock in billions of dollars of gas investments into our future power bills before having to make the inevitable shift to cheaper clean energy. Clearly, now is the time for Governor Cooper to stop them. The ACP construction is stalled. A strong appeal of the water quality permit is pending. Just last week, analysts at Morgan Stanley warned that the ACP, quote, will not move forward due to legal risks, end quote, while suggesting that utilities should move straight from coal to renewable energy, which is cheaper, they said. Finally, NC Warren, our allies, anticipate criticism from some of Cooper's allies and, and people but climate urgency demands his action now. He might not even be governor a year from now. Also, his action would be wildly popular. Canceling the ACP would save North Carolinians tens of billions of dollars. And <coughs> polls show strong bipartisan support for renewable energy among all, all voters. And most of them didn't even realize when they answered that question that renewables are cheaper. Cooper told WRAL in October that a moratorium on gas projects should be considered in the near future. We're urging Governor Cooper to make it happen. Thank you again for coming.